rap the baby, baby rap the soul, rap the ooh, rap the baby. Yeah, I think, I think you're good. Audio sounds okay. I got that baby, baby rap the soul, rap the ooh, baby. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about wrapped soul. Yes, that's a primitive that you should know about and I've never talked about it. So here I am talking about it. Today we're gonna actually, I kinda, what was I saying? Wrapped soul, right. So we're gonna talk about what wrapped soul is, what it's used for, so why it's relevant. And then we have a look how it works on a technical level. And then we'll of course also have a look at how we can programmatically work with it. Such that we can use wrapped soul in our programs. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Baby wrapped that soul. I'm still more in the music kind of mode than in a Solana tutorial kind of mode, but we'll get there. So what the hell is wrapped soul? Wrapped Solana. God damn it. No, it's Sol. It's Sol. Don't call it Solana when it's Sol. <laughs> Sol. Damn it. So that's one of those special accounts because to get an account like this, you need to be part of the system. You can't get that manually. So that's a special address that is reserved for wrapped Sol. But what is it? Account. Check it. So it doesn't say much here. It's literally those two things, which is, guess what? The decimals and I don't know, initialized, but that's an interesting account. So yeah, this is just, just a special address. It could be any other account, but it's a reserved one just to indicate that this is something special. It's really not necessary that we have it at that address, but we have it at that address. But yeah, what the hell is it? It's a token, uh huh. So that would mean it's owned by the token program. Is that true? Yes, it is in fact owned by token keg, the old token program or the first token program, the token program. And also funnily, what we see here is that there's not much on this account. Wait, that's another funny thing. It has like 400 soul on there and that's all just lost soul because lost souls because people keep sending stuff there because people like to send Sol to token mints. So what is that now? Why do we have a token called wrapped Sol? And I mean, intuitively you might already get that. It's Sol inside a token. So on the high level, basically what we're doing is we take Sol, the native coin that we use for, you know, paying transaction fees and whatever, and we put it into this token. So now we have a token, a thing that behaves like a token, because it is a token. <laughs> but underneath there's the soul in there, so we can unwrap it and get our soul out and then we can pay transaction fees or put it on an account for rent exemption and those kind of things again. But why would we want to take the soul in the first place and wrap it into wrapped soul? Well, simply because sometimes we want a token. Why? Well, think of any DeFi application or anything that, you know, works with tokens. Those programs will implement everything for the token program, right? If you do a swap, you have the base token and you have the quote token, and then you can swap between them. Let's say you had the Euro coin. Why not? Because Euro, E-U-R-C. Anyway, so you have Euro how do you pronounce that for real? And then on the other side, as a code currency, you might have USDC. Those are both tokens. And then you can swap Euro coins for USDC and the other way around, right? Because they're both tokens that will just work. But let's assume that instead of Yurk, you would want to swap USDC Sol. Since Sol works differently than the tokens, the program would need to treat it differently and always have this special case if it's Sol then transfer from the Lampert's field, because again, every account has this Lampert's field that stores how much Sol is in there. For instance, this one has so, so many Sol, but for tokens, it's stored in the amounts field in the token account. So the program would need to always have this special case. If it's Sol, then transfer the Sol from there. And in any other case, just work with tokens normally. And that just adds a lot of extra code that nobody wants to do. So the way simpler way 
is to make Sol behave like it was a token with Rept Sol. Why do they call it Rept Solana? This is making me crazy. It's called W Sol. There you go, Rept Sol. And we can see that it's owned by the token program. So all we do is we wrap the Sol into a token and then we can use it regularly in any DeFi application where you want to work with Sol, but you don't want to treat it as a special case, but just as any other token, because then you only need to have one logic. That's the motivation for wrapped Sol. Now let's have a look at how it works. What's inside a token mint again? Something like an authority, something like total supply or something. But that's all just zeros because this account is in fact something special or at least this particular mint is treated differently. All that's really stored here in this account is the nine for nine decimals. So this byte that says how many decimals there are, that's correctly set to nine, which is what we would expect because Solana, now I also said Solana, Sol, the native token of Solana, also has nine decimals because the Lamperts per Sol is one billion, so nine zeros. But anyway, let's see what that stuff here means. The mint account has the mint authority, so that's 32 plus four bytes. So the mint authority, mint authority is zero, then the supply, that's another eight bytes. The supply is also zero, but that's just something special here that the supply is not actually tracked in here because really it works a bit different than an, a regular token and we'll get there. And then the decimals, yes, that's the only thing we actually store in here and the state of being initialized. Yes, it is initialized and it has nine decimals. That's what we see here. And the rest is then again zero. The freeze authority is also zero. That's the token mint account at this very special address. But what we have not discussed yet, how it works. And pro tip, if you don't know how something works, I mean, I know how it works, right? I wouldn't need to do that now, but I wanna teach you how to go about this, right? If you wanna figure out how something works, how can we work with Reptsol? Then a good start is to just play around with it in protocols that use it. So for instance, let's go to Jupiter. We've got a wallet with a little bit of money on there, but that's Sol. So if we check that wallet, we've got that 0 0.1 Sol, that's the sign for Sol in case you didn't know, in the balance field. So that's the Lampert's field of that account. So if we go Solana account this one, then we see balance 0 0.1. That's the Lampert's field of this account. So that's the native Sol, regular Sol as we know it. And now we can go to Jupiter, connect our wallet. And here somewhere we can say use rep Sol. And then we get this manage and we can rep some Sol. So if we don't know how to do it, then using an application that does it is very helpful to find out how it works. So how much Sol do we want to rep? I don't know half of my balance, I'm gonna wrap it. And we will see, I'll have to pay 0 0.05 plus a token account worth of Sol. And I will get 0 0.05, well, also Sol, but this is wrapped. Let's confirm this. And then we can have a look at this transaction. We had to pay. So this account, the GDP, 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 got some Sol. So that's interesting. We put all of that Sol onto one account and what happened with that account? So it's an ATA, Associated Token Program Create. That mint and that wallet gave me this ATA. So what we're talking about with a GDP is the ATA, Associated Token Account. I'm just gonna repeat those words such that they get into your head because I just keep saying them. And I'm aware that if you're new here, then you don't know what I mean with ATAs and whatever, because you might not have seen all of my videos, but you totally should watch all of my videos. But anyway, I'll just repeat. ATA associated token account, which is the token account where there's exactly one per wallet per token, per token program. That just confused you, I guess. Anyway, <clears throat> and then we do a manual salt transfer to there. So this is interesting. This is now the additional 0 0.05 
because up here we already transferred something the 0 0.020392.8 which is the required SOL for rent exemption. And then we transferred additional 0 0.05 SOL. That's the SOL that we want to wrap. And what happens then is the interesting part, token program sync native. What the hell does that do? That's the question. So that's the only thing that we don't know yet. What does the token program sync native do? So we will want to have a look at that. And all it takes is this one account, the GDP. Let's have a look. So we see it's a token account. It's the ATA of our wallet. And the mint is the SOL, wrapped SOL, no Anna. And then here we already see it neatly displayed by the Explorer. It basically divides the SOL that it has into two fields or in, into two amounts which is the amount needed for rent exemption and the amount that is the actual balance, that is the literal wrapped SOL. So this is the SOL that lives in that account now, but that account is a token account. So we put additional SOL onto that account. And also if we look at that in CLI here, Solana account this one, we will see that the balance is 0 0.052. We already saw that in Explorer as well. And yeah, the bytes, that's the mint, that's the sol something, something. And then the amount somewhere here, I don't know where exactly. What I would expect is this 80 F zero. Okay, so that's the amount. There is the amount. That's the 0 0.05 sol. And that's the mint. And that's the, I don't know what else is stored in the token account, mint and authority. So that's the authority. This is the sol and this is the rept because that is higher than this. So this is the W and this is the S. But anyway, we're getting very deep into the base 58 encodings again. So watch the video on base 50. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, cool. So basically we see that we have wrapped sol. So this is in two places now. For once it's here in the actual amounts field. And for once it's here in the Lamparts field, two places in that account that store that information. One is the actual SOL and one is the token amount. But how did it get there? Let's analyze this slowly and try to replicate this with our own little program. Let's go DevNet because cheaper. <clears throat> so get a connection, load the key pair. What else do we need? Native Mint, by the way, is the address. Address of the special mint wrapped native soul in SBL token for wrapped native soul. And there's also one for token 2022. Actually, I would be interested what that address is. Interesting for token 2022, it's nine pen nine. But yeah, we don't worry about token 2022 token extensions. We're just interested in this one. But yeah, we saw that native mint, that's the SO1111111112. So what else do we need? We need to get the ATA. Let's do it really slow and simple, get or create associated token account. So we really do it step by step with transaction after transaction as well. We can then of course optimize and put it all in one transaction, but for now let's keep it super simple. We'll create for the native mint and our key pair, the ATA. Okay. Check that that's the same address. So step one, just create the ATA. That should be fairly simple. Get an airdrop real quick. And then let's run this token account not found error. That's why you should create it because if you don't find it, you should create it. Oh, what? Don't ask me what that was about, but we got the GDP, GDP, GDP. That's our token account. And that now exists also on DevNet, voila. But it's just a token account with zero sol on there, or actually, <clears throat> I mean the 0, 0.0 if we Solana account this, we see it has the regular 0 0.002 for a token account and the amount is still zero. So there's no tokens in this token account and there's also no additional SOL on this account. So now that we have this account, we can do a simple SOL transfer because we saw that's what we do next. So we just do a system program transfer from our key pair to our ATA. How many? Well, how about half a soul? Cool. Boom. 
let's see so now we should see that we have half a sol on here balance is 0 0.5 plus that for the rent but what we also see is that for the amount it's still zero the amount is still zero so we still have no wrapped sol we can also check it in the wallet then we see all we have is just half a sol in our regular wallet but still no wrapped sol it doesn't even show us the empty token account but we can spl token accounts and we see wrapped sol we have zero Okay, so the sol is on the token account, but as with any other token account, that doesn't change anything. Just because we put sol on that token account doesn't mean we get balance. So how do we get balance? How can I top up my wrapped sol balance? And that is now where this token program sync native instruction comes in. So without really knowing what it does, let's just do it. Let's just do one transaction where we, as our instruction, do a sync. It must be somewhere, hopefully in SPL token. Sync native, there we go. Gives us a signature already. So that already does the entire thing, okay? That's the transfer. So step one, step two, and then step three. Sync native needs the connection and the payer and the account so that's the ata yeah that's good enough for me we await this log the signature let's do that there we go could check that out we won't see much all we do is we pay for a transaction and we do the token program sync native but then do you see that already we have balance changes for wrapped sol we have plus 0 0.5 so our balance is now 0 0.5 sol and that's inside the account now. That's inside the token account. So if we have a look at Solana account, this guy again here, then we will see that's our balance. We do have balance. And if we calculate that, then we'll see that that's 0 0.5 sol. Pretty cool, huh? Now we have an actual token balance for the wrapped sol. And now we will also see here that those balances change, the token balance, is 0 0.5 and the what we have left for rent is this and the sum of this is the actual sol on the account so this is the trick the wrapped sol lives on the token account which also means that when we transfer a token wrapped sol then that should also transfer the sol on the token accounts that's what my head tells me, but I've never actually tried it. So let's send some wrapped sol around. So we get the ATA again, and then we do a transfer checked with the connection. The source is the ATA, the mint is native mint, and the destination, well, who do we send it to? The wrapped sol. <laughs> no, I'm gonna create myself a receiver. Is that smart enough to create the token account if it doesn't exist? Nope let's assume they already have a token account a receiver ata the owner that's my key pair amount i don't know we sent 0 0.1 we need the decimals we know that's nine i'll just hard code that because i'm lazy and that should transfer me 0 0.1 wrapped sol let's see transfer some wrapped sol nope will not do token account not found error Oh, right. Now I get that as well, why I had that error in the beginning. So this is a, we create a token account and then we immediately query it. So we don't wait long enough. Classic error. We've seen that before in the video on like common errors where we just don't wait long enough. So basically, but now it sent the transaction to create that one. So now if I do it now, it should work because now it can query for that account and then send the transaction and give me the signature for it as we see here wonderful what we see is token balances change my gdp is deducted that 0 0.1 and the got the 0 0.1 sol wrapped sol so that's the numbers in the token account and it's just a, a normal transfer with the token program that's all nothing special but what also happened behind the scenes 
is that here actual Sol was moved around. There you see it, actual Sol is being moved as well from this token account to this token account. So the Lampert's field of the token account is also changed because it's wrapped Sol. And this is a special feature of the token program. That's a token program thing that if the mint is the native mint, so the this one, the SO1111111, then it not only transfers the tokens, so changes that amount, but also changes the amount in the Lampert's fields. Isn't that cool? And so only the token program needs to implement that special feature and then all the other programs can just treat wrapped sol as a regular token. So in a way wrapped sol is an interface. It's the token interface for actual native sol. So whenever you want to work with sol or tokens and they should be replaceable, then just implement the functionality for tokens and use wrapped sol if you want to use sol. And the token program will take care of the rest that the actual sol is also transferred when transferring wrapped sol because that's the actual wrapped part that we're talking about. This is the token that we're sending around and this is the wrapped sol, the, the real sol. Now, isn't that cool? But how do we get back our sol now? How do we unwrap? That's actually pretty simple as well because the actual sol lives on the token account. So all we need to do is close the token account which recovers all the sol from it. And there we maybe see why this is such a special case and why the supply of this token will stay zero such that the token program doesn't need to bother with this because it doesn't matter because the actual supply is the actual sol. Theoretically, we could wrap all of the sol. Well, not all of it because some is caught up in rent and stuff, but that's why we don't need to track that such that we don't need to pass in that mint account when we close a token account. So let's demo that. I think I'm gonna demo it just for the receiver. Let me just Solana config set the receiver and then check what accounts we have. We should have one account, the wrapped sol with 0.1 as balance. And if we close that one, oh, I don't have sol. So let's fund it real quick. Now I should be able to close it. There we go. So the receiver who had 0.1 sol is closing this account and see, we do not put wrapped sol as an address. It's just those three, the token program, the ATA and the signer, but it doesn't contain wrapped sol, the, like the mint, the SO1111112. That's not in the list of accounts because we don't need the mint for closing accounts in a regular token mint. So that's why we also don't need it now. And since we don't have that, the token program couldn't even, if it wanted to, change the supply. That's why the token program doesn't track supply for native sol, for wrapped sol. But yeah, anyway, so what we see here is that we just close this token account, thus all of the sol is being removed. And because we closed that, we now have the 0 0.1 on our account, including the rent. We got all of that out of there. So this is how we unwrapped that amount of sol. We had to unwrap all of it, but that's one way how to unwrap that sol. And we also see it here. If the token account is just deleted, then of course also the balance goes down. But that's a special thing for wrapped sol that actually doesn't work with regular tokens. Have you ever tried that? If I had another token, and I'm gonna demonstrate that to you real quick. Let's say I had some other random token, create account, and then mint one of this token. So now we have one of this token here. And with this token, we cannot just say SPL token close for this token, because that still has tokens. Empty the account in order to close it. And that's just a CLI message. I want to get the actual simulation message. Let's see here. We should then get the simulation for the logs. There we go. That's what I'm interested in. 
Ha! And here is the thing that I wanted to show you. The token program does close account and then we get the error non-native account can only be closed if its balance is zero. Non-native because this is a non-native account. So if you ever get confused to what that means, any token is a non-native token unless it is Repsol, which is the native token. So non-native account can only be closed if the balance is zero. So we cannot just close an account if there are still tokens in there for regular tokens. And the exception is if it's wrapped sold, then we can just close it and we get all the sold out because that's how we unwrap. In fact, is that how we unwrap? Let's ask Jupiter. So we have 0 0.005 wrapped sold in here. If we unwrap that, then we get all of that back. And let's see how Jupiter does it. Does it also just close the token account? There we go, we have our soul back. What does this transaction actually do? Yes, it also just closes the token account. It just does a close account. And that's how you unwrap. Now, if I wanted to partially unwrap, then I would need to close the account, create a temporary account, put it there, send it back. It is possible, but it's a bit complicated. But usually if you unwrap, you unwrap everything or you do it in two steps, you unwrap and then you wrap again. So you create the account again and then you sync native. Because what sync native does is it synchronizes the amount of sol that is available in the account with the actual amount in the token account. So in my head, that should actually also work if we have an account and then put some more on there. So for instance, let's stay with our GDP, GDP, which currently has 0 0.4 actual sol on there, actually with a bit more for rent and also has 0 0.4 in the account. If I now do those two steps again, where I first add a little more sol, maybe let's add 0 0.2 more sol. So I've sent a little more sol onto that account. So if I refresh here, that number doesn't actually refresh, but we would see it if we checked it out like this, because we have 0 0.6 sol, actual sol on that account now, but the amount still says 0 0.4. Yes, I can totally read that because that's what it says here. So to get those additional 0 0.2 sol into the actual amount, what I'll have to do is, you guessed it right, I have to sync native. So if I just do a sync native like this, then again, we see here I get plus 0 0.2 to have a total of 0 0.6. So I can top up my wrapped sol balance anytime by just sending sol on the token account and calling the token program sync native instruction, which just takes this one account in the list of accounts and no instruction arguments or whatever. I mean, the instruction arguments is 11 for this is the sync native instruction. That's all the instruction data that you need. Yeah, and that's how you wrap and unwrap sol. Pretty cool, huh? The actual sol balance, of course, doesn't change because yeah, why would it? Oh, now I just had a better idea how to unwrap just a little bit by creating a temporary token account with wrapped sol, transferring to that account and then closing that account. That's how you can unwrap a little bit. Should we do that just real quick? Why not? And I'm gonna do it all in one transaction. Those methods here are, are nice, but they always use one transaction. So let's also showcase how to properly do it by just building the instructions and then putting it all in one transaction. I don't need to get or create. All I need to do is get associated token address sync. That's all I need to do for the native mint because I know that it exists, otherwise I can't unwrap anyway. So then I'll have the ATA for wrapped sol. What did we want to do? We want to unwrap a little bit. There's a nicer way to do this than with an actual keeper that we sign with, but that's a topic for a different video. And so all we're going to do is just create that account and then transfer. My instructions are going to be cool. So we create an account for the token program. Then we need to tell the token program, Hey, make it a token account initialize account v3 then i create a transfer from my ata mint is the native mint 
to the temporary account. I'm the owner. How much? Well, the amount to unwrap, let's say we unwrap 0.1 sol. Good, next up, we've transferred there. Then we create a close account instruction, close account instruction to pronounce it correctly. Which account? The temporary account is the one we wanna close. Destination, my key pair, that's the guy who wants to receive the funds. So the wrapped sol, I mean the, the sol inside the wrapped sol. So the, no, it's the rep, right? It's the rep soul, right? The, not the token, but the coin, the actual soul. And the authority, well, I have authority over this. Pretty simple. And that should allow me to unwrap a part of my rep soul holdings. Let's see if that works. So let's see, TS node unwrap. You think that works first time? I don't. Ah, there we go. I am correct. <laughs> Oh, what did I mess up? Signature verification. Fa oh, of course. Well, that's a simple one. Um, of course, if I have such an account for the temp account, then I also need to sign with this one. Otherwise the system program won't let me create account. Okay, what else? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Wow, okay, second time, go. Let's see, pretty neatly. There we go. We got 0 0.1 sol back, minus transaction fees from the GDP, GDP. So the GDP put it onto this temporary account that we created and then killed again. So it's just a temporary account. This works great. We got a little bit of our wrapped soul holdings and got it into actual soul again, just by creating a temporary account, initializing it as a token account, transferring to that token account, and then just closing that token account, which will get all of the soul that is wrapped in there out again to the destination. Yay, we're working with wrapped soul. Isn't that cool? And with that, I think I wanna end it already. Like that's a good, uh, a good walk through how wrapped soul works. Do you have any further questions? Anything I didn't cover? Anything I said in the beginning that I'm gonna cover and that didn't cover? Happens sometimes. We went through what it's used for. We looked at it on chain. We wrote a small program that wraps and unwraps stuff. I mean, you could also have a look at that in Rust, which is pretty much the same, just different function names. It's the same on mainnet and on devnet. I could have a look at wrapped sol with token extensions, which is just the same idea, just with a new token program. But yeah, no, I think I'm happy with that. I think that's a good short little video to give you an intro to wrapped sol and uh, to put that in your tool belt of just being able to simply work with wrapped sol as well, such that your application can automatically wrap the sol for your users. You just transfer the sol on a token account and then call the sync native and you're good. And to get it out, you just close the token account. Easy as that. Yeah, and that's it. That's how you work with wrapped sol. That's a wrap. Watch those other videos, like this one, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, adios.